Hello and welcome to the lecture of VLSI technology again. In the last lecture, we discussed about the silicon as the prospective uh, material for uh, IC technology. And uh, today we will discuss about some industry practices and uh, devices which are used to construct or to manufacture the crystal of silicon. Okay, so uh, Zoroastri crystal growth apparatus also called a puller which is shown in figure 15 this below figure i will just show you it is of 17600 kg of weight and uh, 6.5 meter tall this puller can be configured to hold a melt charge of 60 kg of silicon so we can produce 60 kg of silicon using this apparatus called puller and it can be transformed to 100 millimeter of diameter and 3.0 meter of length okay that 60 kg of silicon can be transformed to 100 millimeter of diameter and 3 meter of length the puller has four subsystems as shown uh, in the figure as well this is the schematic figure this is the actual figure which is used in the industry and this is the schematic figure so to better understand the theory behind the you know uh, the actual practice this schematic figure is drawn so four uh, different kinds of subsystems are there first is furnace second is crystal cooling mechanism third is ambient control and fourth is control system so one by one we will discuss about furnace crystal cooling mechanism ambient control and the control system okay before uh, going ahead just look at this diagram so that uh, we can go ahead with our discussion uh, this is the control system and power supply okay and inside this figure you can see this is the melt where the uh, uh, silicon melt is there crucible which holds the melt and this is the heater susceptor temperature temperature sensor insulation purse tube viewport sense for uh, diameter control upper housing uh, seat shaft lift and rotation ambient gas inlet sheet seat shaft and chuck furnace chamber meld crucible exhaust and vacuum pump this is the crucible rotation and lift so this is how the whole structure is placed okay so first uh, part or first subsystem is furnace perhaps the most important component of the growing system is the crucible okay where uh, the uh, melt is hold actually since it contains the melt the crucible material should be chemically unreactive with molten silicon obviously so whatever pot you are using to hold that uh, melt has to be non-reactive if it reacts with the um, uh, molten silicon then some other kind of uh, you know residue can be generated so that has to be avoided and this is this is our aim so designing of the crucible and selecting the material that uh, which material is best suited for the crucible design is very much of importance when we are going for the crystal growth of silicon so this is the major consideration because the electrical properties of silicon are sensitive to even PVBB levels, part per billion levels. So even a uh, purity, impurity inside the billions of, you know, you can say, you can say that there are one billion impurity, okay, and one impurity can trigger that uh, uh, the electrical property of silicon out of that one billion. Okay, so this this is how the sensitivity level is there. So we need to discuss about the uh, sensitivity level, and we also need to discuss that uh, it is very important to consider the crucible matter design. Other desirable characteristic for crucible material are high melting point, thermal stability, and hardness. Obviously, because uh, the temperature around the crucible has to be you know in in uh, thousands of degrees centigrade then uh, the thermal stability melting point and hardness is, is of very much importance okay additionally the crucible should be inexpensive or reusable recycling has to be uh, the property of the crucible unfortunately molten silicon can dissolve <coughs> virtually all commonly used high temperature and uh, materials such as uh, refractory carbides TIC or TAC thus introducing unacceptable levels of melting species into the crystal so we cannot use TIC and TAC 
कार्बन और सिलिकॉन कार्बाइड क्रूसिबल्स आर आल्सो अनसुटेबल ऑल दो कार्बन इज इलेक्ट्रिकली इन इनएक्टिव इन सिलिकॉन हाई क्वालिटी क्रिस्टल्स कैन नॉट बी ग्रोन विद कार्बन सैचुरेटेड मेल्ट्स ड्यूरिंग ग्रोथ अ टू फेज सॉलिडिफिकेशन ऑफर्स वंस द सॉलिड सॉल्युबिलिटी हैज बीन एक्सीडेड द सेकंड फेज इज एसआईसी सिलिकॉन कार्बाइड व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर डिसलोकेशन जनरेशन एंड लॉस ऑफ single crystal structure the remaining choices of the crucible are either silicon nitride and fused silica so we are rejecting tic and tac and we are also rejecting carbon based uh, silicon carbide and we are selecting silicon nitride and fused silica for the use of crucible and they are in use today okay fused silica or quartz quartz that however react with silicon releasing silicon and oxygen into the melt the dissolution rate is quite substantial as shown in figure uh, 17 we will see figure 17 the actual rate of erosion is a function of temperature and the convection conditions either forced or thermal in the melt most of the oxygen in the melt escapes by the formation of gaseous silicon monoxide okay so whatever oxygen is there silicon monoxide it will be released with the silicon monoxide <coughs> the si the sio condenses on inside the furnace chamber creating a cleanliness problem in the pool but that can be treated uh, crystals grow with these crucible also contain substantial amount of interstitial oxygen that can be either beneficial or detrimental as we will be discuss later the purity of the quartz itself also affects the silicon purity because the quartz can contain sufficient acceptor impurities to limit the upper values of resistivity that can be grown Okay, we we discussed about this uh, table one in the last lecture where we have taken some of the examples that how we can you know increase the resistivity by increasing or decreasing the impurity level. And in the table, it was very clear that uh, we you have to you know mix the impurity in the part per billion level or part per million level, and depending upon that, the resistivity varies. So C plus SiO2, it will give you SiO silicon monoxide plus carbon monoxide. Crucibles for <coughs> large CZ coolers have diameter to height ratio approximately one or slightly greater. Common diameters are 25, 30, and 30 centimeter for charge size of 20, 12, 20, and 30 kg respectively. A 45 centimeter, 60 kg configuration have. Uh, even been proposed in the previous figure cooler in the figure 50 and 16 we have seen just a uh, few while ago wall thickness of 0.25 uh, cm are used but the silica is sufficiently soft to require the use of a susceptor for mechanical support upon cooling the thermal mismatch between residual silicon and quartz usually results in the fracture of the crucible okay so the feasibility of using silicon nitride as a crucible material has been demonstrated using the cvd deposited nitride cvd is chemical vapor deposition deposition we will study about this in later uh, in the syllabus such an approach is attractive as a means of eliminating oxygen from crucible grown crystals however even the nitride is eroded resulting in a doping of the crystal with nitrogen a weak donor <coughs> CVD nitride is the only form of nitride with sufficient purity for crucible use. However, this method needs further development before it becomes practical. The susceptor, as mentioned previously, is used to support the quartz crucible. Graphite, because of its high temperature properties, is the material of choice for the susceptor. so what we have seen we have seen that for the crucible material we are going to use silicon nitride or we are going to use the fused silica and for the susceptor we are going to use the graphite for its high temperature properties a high purity graphite such as a nuclear uh, grade is usually specified this high purity is necessary to prevent the contamination of the crystal from impurities that would be volatilized from the graphite to the temperature involved besides the susceptor other graphite parts in the hot zone of the furnace require high purity the susceptor <coughs> rests on a pedestal whose shaft is connected to the motor that provides rotation the whole assembly can usually be raised and lowered to keep the melt level 
equidistant from a fixed reference point which is needed for automatic diameter control. So there is automatic diameter control for the equidistant uh, growth of the crystal. And it is important since you are <coughs> producing the crystal for the IC technology, you want that it has to be in a very pure manner, in a very structured manner, no deformations has to be there because the process is very expensive. The process of IC manufacturing is very expensive and you do not want any kind of <coughs> impurity or bug inside that because you have to repeat the entire process then. The chamber housing, the furnace must meet several criteria. It should provide easy access to the furnace components to facilitate maintenance and cleaning. The furnace structure must be airtight to prevent contamination from the atmosphere and have a specific design that does not allow any part of the chamber to become so hot that its vapor pressure is chamber would be factor in contaminating the crystal. Another important parameter. Okay, so in, in exam, you may be asked that uh, list out the uh, crystal growth mechanism uh, techniques and uh, its need. Then uh, under the different points, uh, because we are discussing furnace here, you have to point by point address that which material is to be used for crucible, why it is important for crucible, which material is used for the susceptor, what has to be the temperature inside the uh, wall, and what is the what is what should be the property of the chamber housing, and why auto rotation rotation is required. So all these points are important. Okay, to melt the charge, radio frequency or resistance heating have been used. Induction heating is a useful for uh, small melt sizes, but resistance heating is used exclusively in large coolers. Resistance heaters at the power levels involved are generally smaller, cheaper, easier to instrument and more efficient. Typically, a graphite heater is connected to a DC power supply. So this is all about the <coughs> furnace part, furnace subsystem. Then we are moving to the crystal pulling mechanism. The crystal pulling mechanism must with minimal vibration and great precision control two parameters of the growth process, the pull rate and the crystal rotation. Seed crystals, for example, are prepared to precise orientation tolerances and the seed holder and the pulling mechanism must maintain the precise precision perpendicular to the melt surface. Lead screws are often used to withdraw and rotate the crystal. The method unambiguously creates the crystal relative to crucible, <coughs> but may require an excessively uh, high apparatus if the grower is to produce long crystals. Since precise mechanical tolerance is difficult to maintain over a long shaft pulling with a cable may be necessary. Uh, centering the crystal and crucible is more difficult when using cable. Furthermore, although the cable provides a smooth pulling drum, action it is prone to the pendulum effects however since the cable can be wound on the drum the height of the machine can be smaller than the than the similar lead screw puller the crystal leaves the furnace through a large tube first large purge tube where ambient gas is directed from furnace to the crystal after to affect the cooling <coughs> this is uh, all about the crystal pulling mechanism more details are not required. The third one is the ambient control and last one is the control system. The ambient control, uh, the drastically uh, growth of silicon must be conducted in an inert gas or vacuum because the first reason is the hot graphite must be protected from oxygen to prevent erosion. And second important reason is the gas around the process should not react with the molten silicon. Growth in a vacuum meets these requirements. It also has the advantages, advantage of removing silicon monoxide from the system, thus preventing the buildup inside the furnace chamber. So we discussed that during the process of uh, crucible material, the silicon monoxide is generated. So by using the ambient control, we can you can remove that. Okay, so that there is no impurity inside that uh, chamber also, and it can be the treatment I was talking about. The treatment can be done like this. Growth in a gaseous atmosphere must use an inert gas such as helium or argon. So argon and helium is used for the ambient control. The inert gas may be at atmospheric pressure or at reduced pressure growing operations on an industrial scale. Use argon because of its lower cost. A typical 
consumption is 1500 liter per kg of silicon grown okay the organ is supplied from a liquid source by evaporation and must meet requirements of purity relating to moisture huh? and uh, hydrocarbon content and so on okay then next is the control system the control system can take many forms and provides control of process parameters such as temperature crystal diameter pool rate and rotation speeds this control may be closed loop or open loop parameters uh, including pool speed rotation with a high pressure response uh, speed are most uh, amenable to closed loop control the large thermal mass of the melt generally precludes any short term control of the process according to the temperature for example to control the diameter and infrared temperature sensor can be focused on the melt crystal interface and used to detect the changes in the meniscus meniscus temperature so what what uh, the control system can do for you is uh, control system is basically the combination of microprocessors and the sensor so it it decides that what has to be the pressure inside that chamber what has to be temperature inside that chamber what has to be the uh, pull out uh, you know speed uh, of the crystal grown and all these things are important since we are growing the silicon crystal okay so it has to be automated as well so by using the sensor and the combination of the microprocessor the open loop or closed loop system is generated depending upon the application so if see if we are if we want the gain on to be higher side then we will definitely use the open loop and if we want the efficiency on the higher side then we will definitely use the closed loop system okay so here uh, one example is given that uh, to control the diameter and infrared temperature sensor can be focused on the melt crystal interface to detect the changes in the meniscus temperature just above yeah parameters including pool speed rotation with a high response speed are most amenable to closed loop control so if you are controlling the uh, speed and rotation then you have to go for the closed loop system okay otherwise you can go for the open loop system so this is how you will uh, basically generate the so to in in today's lecture we have seen the journey of a device called puller and uh, its uh, different subsystems and how using those subsystems we can generate crystal of silicon in the next lecture we will talk about some other techniques or other topics related to the crystal groups and before preparation of silicon thank you for watching this lecture